2023, I uploaded hundreds of videos to this YouTube channel, and this video right here is essentially a collection of 35 lessons taken from some of those videos to help you boost your sales in 2024. Now, if you missed any of the videos or want to revisit them, the full versions will be linked in the description down below. So if you're feeling really disappointed with your print on demand results, there's actually a massive reason for this, and it's probably not what you're expecting. And to explain this, let me start off with a scenario. Imagine trying to boil water. I know this has nothing to do with print on demand, but hear me out. So you're trying to boil water, it starts off at room temperature, and it slowly starts rising one degree at a time, but you don't really see any difference. The water's getting warmer, but there's no visible difference besides maybe like the odd water bubble that comes up then suddenly once it hits a threshold of well a hundred degrees Celsius suddenly it hits this threshold and just one or two degrees difference set off this big reaction where the water starts to boil none of the work before none of the heating it up made much of a difference seemingly now this is a concept which applies to many things in life including print on demand you might be putting in a lot of work right now but not really seeing any results or at least not the results that you expected or were hoping for. And this is actually a concept that's explained further in a book called Atomic Habits. And I'm just going to read a quote from the book here quickly, where the author James Clear writes that breakthrough moments are often the result of many previous actions which build up the potential required to unleash major change. Another example of this would be bamboo. Now these types of trees take years and years to build up a massive root system underneath the earth so you can't even see them and then suddenly within a few weeks they sort of splash out of the floor 90 feet into the air turning into a massive tree so in order to relate this back to print on demand I'm guessing that many of you are trying to achieve something very powerful with your print on demand business you are probably hoping to build a big income stream which might even replace your current job or your current income. That is something that can't just happen overnight. It might seem like it does happen overnight for some people, but that's just because there's no focus on all of the work they've put in beforehand. A lot of the people on YouTube, they've started making tutorials about print and demand when they've already surpassed this threshold of where the water starts to boil because then they feel comfortable in teaching others about their process. You might think that you're wasting your time and that the work you're putting in right now is being wasted, but it's actually not. It's just being stored for the future result once the threshold is surpassed. So in order to illustrate and understand this point that I'm trying to make further, we can actually use a graph that James Clear provided in his book called the Plateau of Latent Potential. Essentially here you've got the two axes of time and results. The more time you spend on something, you would expect the results to get higher and higher in a linear form. But what actually happens usually is the curve of results stays a lot lower than expected until a certain point in time. So this is not forever. And this kind of area or time frame where your expectations don't meet your results is called the valley of disappointment. And I think this is super valuable information because this valley of disappointment is what most people will find themselves in, including possibly you, during your first year of print on demand. Now, for some people it might take six months, it might take a year and a half, so it, it does vary. There's no exact number and it obviously depends on what sort of work you're putting into your business because there comes a certain point where this valley is over and your expected results actually are then lower than what happens in reality. Another way to approach this is cross niching. So you could start off with a popular niche such as let's do beer and then do and star symbol shirt. And then once again, click on the star symbol and see what comes up. So we've got beer and sunshine, beer and buds, beer and baseball, beer and keys, car keys. No idea where that comes from. I like beer and my dog. The only BS I need is beer and sunshine. So we're getting some longer tail search terms that would be super interesting to take a look into see what the competition is like we've got hold my beer and watch this guns whiskey beer and freedom shirt so i think that's a lot of interesting suggestions sometimes by the way you can also do t-shirt instead of shirt and you will get different results so 
Um, what have we got right here? I like beer and horse racing t-shirt. Cowboys and beer, pizza and beer, beer and fishing, camping and beer. Completely different results just by changing the way that t-shirt or shirt is spelt. Um, let's do coffee. Let's see what coffee comes up with. Coffee and croissant, coffee and TV, coffee and hate, creativity, books, contemplation. I drink coffee and I know things. This is a, a phrase from um, Game of Thrones, so avoid that one. But iced coffee and dogs. Super interesting combination right there. Coffee and alcohol, coffee and donuts. We could do food as well. So pizza and we us do shirt again. And there we go. We've got quite a few results. Pizza and pineapple shirt, pizza and video games, mechanical rat pizza and child casino shirt, whatever that is, cat pizza and tacos. So three topics right there, cross niche, even really cool suggestion, dad and baby pizza shirts. This gives you an idea for the cross niching, right? You use one topic, you put and and the star symbol and you will get a lot of different ideas. Another thing you can do is actually use two star symbols to get even more creative ideas. So let's say we do, I like star symbol and star symbol shirt this is something that adam showed in his video and it's super interesting so we get both of these filled in we've got i like real thick and sprucey shirt i like beer and my dog i like whiskey and cigars i like the wine and not the label i hear voices and they don't like you i like the pink and the yellow like so many ideas right here quite a lot of long tail keywords um, which are always valuable to try out so to using two of these star symbols can give you some interesting results If we want to get started, we have to click on the uh, remove background tool right here and drag and drop an image into this and it will very quickly remove the background like that. Now you, you might say this is a very simple graphic that would be very easy in many other tools as well. And you're right. However, this is not the only thing it can do. It can do some very complex things. So let's try out this, for example, a set of different Halloween illustrations. And there we go. Boom. Just a few seconds and it's done a super good job. Not every little detail is perfect, like these candles could be better. And let me show you something else. So a bit more of a complex one um, from my Halloween tutorial, this one right here with the edges, but there we go. Pretty decent result. It's not, it's not always going to be perfect, don't get me wrong. I did have some attempts where the results were not great, but in most cases, as you can see right here, this is a super, super good result. You can also toggle right here, the before and after, and you can download the file with this button in the top right corner, and then use this PNG file to upscale it afterwards. That's really, really good process to remove the background with clip drop, then upscale afterwards. That way you get around this uh, limitation with the file size and even trees, like even really complex graphics of trees can work really well. Like I've got some examples here. In this case, it's very effectively removed the white. This one, again, super hard to remove the background manually, especially, and this tool does an amazing, amazing job. It's almost definitely the best free background remover with the only limitation of the file size of the input. By the way, another quick tip, I wouldn't really use uh, graphics with a dark background too often or generate graphics with a dark background because as you can see right here, that makes it really hard to remove the background. A lot of these trees, they still have that brown color left and yeah, the even clip drop can't do a very good job. So that's why I often just generate graphics with a white background instead of a dark one or a black one. Method number two is also related to designs, but in this case, we're talking about the quantity or the amount of designs that you're selling. That is one of the easiest ways to just make it more likely to get more sales is upload more stuff. And the first angle to this is motivate yourself to create more designs. Maybe set a challenge where today you're going to create one, tomorrow you're going to create two designs, the day after three, four, five, etc. So level up the target every single day. It doesn't have to be by a lot. You don't have to go from 10 designs to 20 in a day, but just keep raising the bar a little bit to progressively overload how many designs you're creating. You will get better in that process as well, like two or three weeks. You will be having a way easier time to create designs more quickly if you put in that practice and you could pump out like a hundred designs very easily with this strategy in a month. So definitely test that out. I personally create 20 to 30 designs per evergreen niche that I want to enter. It does definitely work doing that in a single day. It takes a few hours, but it is 
is possible. So that is the first thing you can do is challenge yourself to just create more designs. Also set a habit tracker on your phone. There's different apps that you can track habits with to sort of motivate yourself further because you don't want to miss that tracker. You want to get that daily streak going or keep it going. So that is something I would recommend as well. Another way to increase the quantity of designs that you're selling, a lot of people are missing out on, in my opinion, and from what I can tell, is trying out new marketplaces. Because I often hear from beginners, I've got 100 designs on, on Redbubble and I'm not getting any sales. Well, Redbubble is not the greatest platform anyway. Why don't you try out other marketplaces if Redbubble isn't working? One that I've recently talked about a lot is Tostadora. It is not the biggest one in terms of traffic. A lot of people might be turned off from that, but there is actually very little competition from what I can tell because the search results for, for various massive print on demand niches are extremely small on Tostadora. I've been selling on there for a couple of years now. I get regular daily sales in a variety of different niches with fairly simple print on demand designs. So you can do that as well. And I made a tutorial about Tostadora just recently showing you how to get started on there. So that is one suggestion. There is many other platforms, right? Uh, there's TeePublic, Amazon Merch if you can get in, Etsy, Display as well, Spreadshirt. So just open a new store somewhere and expand by just uploading the same design to another platform. You don't have to create new designs for a new marketplace. One thing that can help you with this is upload automation. And that's how I've been able to publish my designs to over 10 different marketplaces very easily. So if you have money to invest, this is not a necessity by the way, but if you have money to invest, upload automation can help save you a ton of time and quickly increase the quantity of designs that you're selling through different marketplaces. One more tip that I definitely want to give you for this method is to saturate your niches. One thing that people often miss is when they look at the search results of a certain niche, let's say it's got a thousand search results. If you upload 10 designs to this niche, then you are 1% of the search results, which is very, very small, right? It's hard to get sales that way, hard to get found, even if you've got a good title, a good design, etc. What if you just created more designs in that same niche? What if you saturated it, if you fattened it out? If you had 100 designs in this very same niche, you would be 10%. So it is a lot more likely for your designs to be found when someone searches uh, for these specific designs. So especially if you've gotten a few sales before in a specific niche, saturate it add more to it and quite a lot like you don't have to hold back if, if you're already getting sales if you've already got some validation create similar designs to the ones that have sold but also some new ones that have got a new spin maybe a new cross niching idea or that are just targeting a different specific group within that niche and lastly another one of my favorite ways to create more designs and increase the quantity of designs that you're selling is scalable designs. Now, this is a method I've mentioned a few times in the past. I've made a few videos about it. The most recent one is uh, called Endless Evergreen Niches, I believe, where I'm literally creating hundreds of designs in just 10, 20 minutes. It can be that quick. That doesn't mean that they're all really terrible. Like they can look really, really good, even though they've not taken very long to create. So scalable designs are a good way to just add to your portfolio very, very easily. And you can do that with Adobe Illustrator. You can do it with Automate POD. And I believe Canva might have a function for this as well. But if you want to learn, in my opinion, the best method to do it, then go check out my Adobe Illustrator illustrator tutorial, which I mentioned uh, about the endless evergreen niches. So first off, we've got a word cloud generator when this one is totally free and it is really, really fun to play around with. This was actually recommended by a subscriber called Black Cat 2 So thanks a lot to you for recommending this. And um, just to give you a few tips about this tool, I might make a separate video about it, but a few quick tips. You can go up here to the menu to word list, click edit, and here's where you configure the words. So for example, if you delete all words, hit OK, then you can add new ones with this button up here and then just rename them to like coffee, um, say latte, cappuccino, caffeine. So essentially you put a few words into this and then you hit clone all words quite a few times because the more words you have here, the more are going to be placed into your shape. And then once you hit apply, that's going to update your word cloud. So as you can see now, we have got a lot more words in this. You can change so many things on this. You can change the shape. So uh, I've actually typed in coffee right here in, in my case and found this coffee mug. There's other icons as well. We could obviously browse through this and select different ones. You can upload your own shapes as well if you wanted to. It just has to have a transparent um, or a white 
background to work in this tool. You can uh, change the fonts. So by default, it's got Railway Helvetica. So you can take some away of that. You can add new fonts if you wanted to. Hit apply and it will quickly update. You can change the uh, direction of the text, which is also quite cool. So horizontal, vertical, diagonal, there's so many options. I've got random selected right here, which looks quite cool. And then uh, the colors. So color scheme is quite important, obviously. Uh, you can configure it yourself custom made color scheme or you can select some presets right here uh, maybe there's some brown colors let's see this one might work for coffee apply that all right there we go um, there's quite a lot of words in this one i probably select a few less or delete some of my words from the list but you get the idea if you head to file that's quite an important thing here as well a word cloud background if you want a transparent background you'll have to go to color and select this right here and then choose the transparent box at the bottom hit ok and then it's going to delete that white background and another really cool feature about this tool i know i, I keep raving on about it but another cool feature is that you can export your files as uh, vectors so save as image HD if you select that you can configure your file name over here and then the file type you could either use PNG or SVG format which is really cool so you can still edit it afterwards and have it infinitely scalable having high quality impressive looking AI art is not everything you need way more to succeed at print on demand because you could have the best design in the world. But if your niche research or your listing SEO is terrible, nobody will ever find your design. However, if we reverse this situation, if you had amazing niche research, if you found a really good low competition niche and your listing SEO, your keywords, your title description are really good, then you will actually get found and get sales even if your design is terrible. AI art is not everything. Having an amazing design definitely helps. But the mistake that you might be making right now, if you're new to print on demand, if you've found out about print on demand because of mid journey, because of Leonardo, is that you might be entering really broad, common niches, like you might be uploading dog stickers or cat stickers, which they might look really nice, but there's also a million other people who are selling the same thing. Where you need to focus your energy is more on the research side of things. Look into specific dog breeds, maybe even go further, look at dog mums for a specific dog breed. Look for funny phrases that you could target this specific customer with. And this is just one example in the dog niche, right? The dog niche is still very competitive. You can find lots of other animals, hobbies, occupations where you can create nice AI graphics and make them part of your design with a phrase in combination with other stuff and you'll have a way easier time at getting sales. I don't get a lot of sales with dogs or cat designs, I don't. It is a lot of random topics which I, I never would have thought to begin with that I'll be getting sales for but niche research led me down these niches. I dug deeper, I found sub niches, cross niche ideas and this is how I'm getting sales. I find low competition niches, search terms that still have demand. Because if you can get found for those, yeah, you might not get as many sales as like the top selling dog design, but at least you will get sales. And over time, more and more people will find your design, it will start getting reviews, and you will get a regular seller that essentially gives you passive income. This video is not going to focus specifically on niche research. I have a long playlist of many different tutorials that show my concepts, my strategies, and many different methods, whether they're free or paid tools in order to try and find niches more easily. The idea is, and this is everyone's experience within print on demand, is that you have to try out different ones. You do not just settle on one niche from the start and hope for it to work. Usually it doesn't, right? What are the chances that the first niche that you pick is going to be perfect? The formula we're going to use or the prompt for this is please write a list of 20 professions for each letter of the alphabet. 
and then after this I'm going to put meaning 20 professions per letter. So you can obviously swap out professions for other things as well such as hobbies, animals, cities, you know I've tried it here with different lists on the left hand side as you can see it does work for all of them. That's all you have to do. I'm going to copy this prompt and leave it in the description as well so you can copy it very quickly. You don't have to write it out yourself and then once you're ready just hit enter or click on this arrow then ChatGPT is going to list off 20 professions for each letter of the alphabet like we asked it to. Now this is not going to run through the entire alphabet right away because there is a character limit or a word limit or something on ChatGPT so what you can do is once it's stopped just type continue right here and then copy the word continue because this is going to happen a few times and then hit enter again it's going to carry on. You are going to get a few wonky words sometimes like here it's just put heavy it was probably trying to write a job title that started off with heavy but it was interrupted by the word limit so right we've gone to the next limit just put continue again and keep this going until you arrive obviously at the letter z and there we go in the matter of just a few minutes we've got tons and tons of uh, evergreen niche ideas right here in terms of job titles and um, there's various ways you can go about using these now you could type them into amazon or whichever marketplace you're selling on and check how many search results there are to sort of gauge the competition now there will be some high competition niches and, and suggestions in this such as teacher it's one that stuck out to me here but with hundreds and hundreds of different job titles you will find low competition niches in this lot which is obviously really really handy that's what we want low competition and a decent amount if not high demand i'll just show you the examples as well for these other lists so cities i just did this for any city in the world really i didn't limit it to a country and uh, the only thing i changed in the formula is i put obviously 20 cities for each letter and i i put at the end right here don't add the country associated with the city because by default chat kept adding like USA, United Kingdom, Germany, you know, it kept adding that to the end, but that's not what we want. If you want to go a step further, I would also recommend just putting your phone into a separate room whilst you're working, even if it's just for a few hours a day, just the fact that it's not in reach and you would have to go to a different room in the house, that's going to make you use your phone a lot less. And the thing is, it's not always just about the time that you spend on the phone, it's the drop in focus afterwards when you get back to the task at hand. So if you're creating a design and midway through you go and check your phone, you see a notification, you, you read something, you text someone back, etc. And then you get back to designing, you've sort of lost your focus, you don't know exactly what you were doing, and it's going to take a little while to get back into the zone of designing. So you might spend a lot more time creating this design because you're never really focused. You always get distracted by your phone and getting pulled in and out of work. I would recommend testing it out that you just leave your phone in a completely different room, even if it's just for a, a couple of hours a day, and then just solely focus on your work without the phone in reach. I do this quite often, especially while I'm recording videos where I need to concentrate and it's been massively beneficial to me. So to take this back over to the print on demand space, you could take this steroid route of print on demand and just sell a lot of counterfeit products like, I don't know, Marvel related, Star Wars related, other TV shows, celebrities or sports teams. You could just rip them off, make a lot of money more quickly, take the quick and easy route, but then your shops will be suspended. And what's even possible, the worst outcome is that you will get sued by one or two of these companies and you will have to pay back damages and you could also go to court or even to prison. Hardly anyone ever mentions this, but it is a possibility on the table if you're breaking trademark laws and infringing on big brands that you get sued in the end or even have to go to court. Now, I'm not saying that all of the get rich quick scheme videos out there teach you to do just that, like ripping off brands. Um, they definitely, a lot of them will definitely have very valuable information and tips and tricks. But where you're going wrong is you're focusing on the quick and easy part. And you're probably thinking that there's all these people out there who get rich quickly. And I'm sat here trying the same thing and the same methods, but it's not working out. Um, it's been very slow progress and it's taking me forever. But if we think back to a value definition, we would actually understand that in order to achieve something valuable and respected, like running a successful, sustainable, business, we need to go down the slow and hard route because if it was quick and easy, everyone would have a business, it wouldn't be valuable, you wouldn't be watching videos about it because it would just be easy. You could just snap your fingers and get there. You want to go down the route 
of difficulty and longer time horizons because at the end of that route is the success that you're longing for or the goals that you want to achieve. If you go on down the quick and easy route all the time or you're trying to go that way, then you will usually be met with disappointment or with more problems than when you started. And moving on, here's a very annoying issue that many of you are probably aware of when it comes to niche research on Amazon specifically. So if we type in, for example, disc golf shirt, we get 6,000 results. Now, if you scroll down to the page all the way at the bottom and click on page three, that number often changes to a completely different one. So now we've got 60,000 results for disc golf shirt. So 10x the results, which of those numbers is actually correct? Well, it was um... no idea. It was very hard to say. A lot of people you now swear on the page three result and they always check this number first before they decide to enter a niche. However, I think if you get these sort of confusing results on Amazon, copy the main keyword and type it in on a couple of other marketplaces instead. So on Redbubble, we've got 5,600 results for disc golf. That's not anywhere near 60,000. So I'm leaning towards the 6,000 results on Amazon being more accurate, but also check on Etsy perhaps where the term disc golf shirt has 3,389 results. So again, in my opinion, I don't think that the 60,000 that we saw on Amazon on page three is accurate. Maybe it pulls in a lot of listings that just have the keyword golf in there because there will be a lot of other golfing related shirts or products on Amazon. I don't know for sure. It is super confusing, but if you get stuck, make sure to check on Redbubble, Etsy, or maybe T Public as well. We often assume that success is linked to one defining breakthrough moment or a very special idea that will change our life overnight. We think that big success requires big action. This mindset can be very intimidating and leave us feeling demotivated so we don't even take any action whatsoever. Alternatively, the opposite of that would be just improving by 1% every single day, which at first sounds very, very pointless, and like you will never really notice any difference, but it is amazing how much of a difference tiny improvements can make over time. Here's how James Clear explains this effect in his book, Atomic Habits. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. Conversely, if you get 1% worse each day, for one year, you'll decline nearly down to zero. Simply put, the 1% rule is the idea that small consistent improvements, literally just 1% per day, can lead to significant growth and success over time. It's essentially the power of compounding just applied to your personal and professional growth. Now you might be wondering, how do I apply this rule to my print on demand business? And that's what I'm going to go over next with some specific examples that you can implement into your daily routine. So let's get started with design skills. You might not be a professional designer right now, but that's totally fine. We all start out somewhere. So what if you commit to just improving one small aspect of your design skills every single day? So for example, let's say today you learn a new tool within your design software. As an example, Adobe Illustrator has various different tools. Whilst you don't need to know what all of them do, it is handy to just learn a new one every now and then, which could potentially really make your design process a lot easier and save you time as well. So let's say you do that today. You learn one new tool in your design software, and then tomorrow you could take a look at font pairings, explore some new fonts, try and put them together, mash them together to get a really nice and coherent looking design. So there you've leveled up your font skills essentially. The day after tomorrow, you could then have a look at current design trends. What designs are doing really well right now in various different niches? Can I replicate this design style to apply it to my own niches as well? So these are all very simple, small improvements that you can make on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to do them in this order. You could do one new tool in your design software for three days in a row. 
it doesn't matter, but if you put some variety into there, you will expand your knowledge within design skills in various different areas on a daily basis. And it, this doesn't have to take hours, just make a, a small process of 10, 15, 20 minutes, however much time you have, try and learn just one new thing to expand your design skills every day. And the runner up today is Mockup Mac. This is a very underrated site in my opinion that not too many people know about. What you have to do here is click on get started for free, no sign up required, and it will load up a page with different really cool looking mockup images. Now you can upload your artwork with this green button. Then you have to adjust the placement with this screen right here. You can also scale this up if you want to, and then center it horizontally or vertically, then hit submit. And it's going to generate previews for all of these free mockups right here. And what I like about this site is that the mockups actually look really amazing. Like, look at this one, super realistic, just high quality mockups. There's not a ton of choice, but I think the aesthetics of these definitely stand out. And you've got a second page as well, and you can also change the color on some of these. Not all of them have the ability to change the color, but a few of them do. So let's click into this one as an example. You can still go ahead and edit the artwork and the placement of it, change the color scheme over here, and then once you're done, click download high resolution at the bottom and it will have this pop up about writing a testimonial, which you can ignore. It will save the actual mockup to your downloads folder once again. So super quick and easy a variety of different high quality mockups that you find here and you don't have to sign up to anything. Another principle that is really good right here to discuss is something called the Pareto principle. Some people know it as the 80-20 rule. And I find this super interesting because it applies, if you think about it, to many areas in life. And the Pareto principle actually says that 80% of our efforts generate 20% of our results. So most of what we do gets us only a small fraction of our results. Whereas 20%, the remaining percentage of our efforts, gets us 80% of the results. This is not just true for print on demand, but many things in life. One real life example that I found is that statistically, 20% of drivers cause 80% of accidents. So most people actually drive all right and safely, safely, and they rarely ever, if, if at all, get into an accident. Whereas 20% of the people on the road, they're quite reckless, don't pay attention, and they cause a lot of the accidents. If we go to print on demand, what most people can relate to, and you can you can ask any print on demand YouTuber, they'll probably tell you the same, is that 20% of our designs generate 80% of our income. Those numbers are not exact, but for most people, they will tell you, yeah, 20% of what I've designed has gotten me quite a lot of sales, whereas the other 80% has either never sold whatsoever or it's maybe got one sale and then that was it. Now that you know this principle, you might be wondering, well, I've created 200 designs. Why haven't 40 designs gotten a sale yet? According to the Pareto principle, that's what the outcome should be, right? I should have gotten at least 20% of, of my work to, to give me some results. And you, you're right in that assumption, but from my experience, this Pareto principle of 20% of your designs actually giving you some sort of result doesn't apply three months later. When I create new designs now, even now, three months later, most of them haven't sold. It's usually a year later when 20% of them have gotten me sales. So again, longer time horizon, business takes time. You cannot judge it on two, three months, especially if you're a beginner, especially if you're just starting out. You might have followed all of the videos exactly like step by step, the research guides, the design guides, the SEO guides, and you think you're doing everything right. And I believe you, like you're going in the right direction, but even if you follow all the guides correctly, that they're just a guide. They cannot guarantee success. That's the unfortunate thing. The success comes through loads of trial and error with the right strategies. You can always increase the potential of actually getting a sale by getting better at design, 
trying out different research methods or getting more in depth with your research. By trying to get better at listing SEO, you can always increase the potential of getting a sale. That's definitely true, but you can never guarantee it. Just, just because you follow a YouTube tutorial one-to-one, -one, there's, there's no guarantee that you will get a sale. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for anyone else on YouTube and it won't work for you. There is no way getting around that phase where you just have to try a lot of different niches, a lot of different design styles until eventually you will get your sales trickle in, especially whilst we're going to move into Q4 soon. There'll be a lot more traffic in November, December, especially for evergreen niches. So get, get preparing, right? Don't design Christmas themed things. Those are not as important. Focus on evergreen stuff, hobbies, job titles, people's interests. That's, that's how I prepare for, for Q4 sales. Method number two is on fontscribble.com and they have got a really cool font identifier. We'll leave a link to this site in the description. They also have a lot of free fonts on this website that are good for print and demand. So essentially all you have to do here is upload an image. So in this case, I'll do a more POD centric example. Oftentimes we see a t-shirt design. We wonder what the font is and want to use it in our own design. So that's what I'm doing right here. Let's say you wanted to know what this font is. You can then use this box right here to once again, highlight the piece of the design that you want to identify. You can resize the box or you can also just draw a new one like this. Just click and drag around the word president in my case, because that is the easiest one to make out, I think, for this font. And then you just need to click this purple button down here and it will quickly load font suggestions. And the good thing about Font Scribble is it actually gives you different websites. So in this case, we've got Font Zillion and we've got Font Scribble. I've had results where there's a long list of different marketplaces or websites where you can either buy the font or download it for free. So you get a Lot of different options and um, whereas you know what the font only shows you results on their actual own website and in this case a capture rate is actually the exact same font that we saw on the t-shirt design i know this font i really like it and you can open it up like this you've got the two versions right here it is on font scroll available for free download free commercial use you can download it up here with this button and if you're not sure about the licensing this button over here says this is free for creating commercial graphics and documents. So if the commercial desktop use is enabled, then you can use these for print on demand. There's actually a really new feature within Illustrator that enables you to recolor your entire design using AI. And you can find this feature under the edit menu down here click on edit colors and select generative recolor beta. So this is currently still in beta, probably going to get a lot better over the coming months or years. You've got some sample prompts that you can select down here and it will open up uh, some color variations or you can enter um, your own prompt at the top to generate a new color scheme. So you could go for uh, monochromatic, for example, you could go for warm colors. You can enter various different things into here to get a variety of different results. If you're looking for a specific style, a specific feeling with your colors, then you can quickly generate them right here without having to go in and manually change everything. So definitely a super cool feature. Sometimes uh, the color schemes that come out are not perfect for the design you're using and it kind of obscures the design. But as you can see here, most of these actually look really cool and give a good alternative to the original color scheme. So in order to understand my designs, you first of all need to know that it is multiple tools in one, kind of like a Swiss army knife. It has many different features and you don't have to use them all. You can pick and choose the ones that suit you the best to help you with your process. It is suitable for anyone, whether you have no budget whatsoever, you can get a lot of use and time saved out of the free version. Or if you do like investing into your print and demand business, there is additional features with the paid plans that we'll go into in a minute here. Now, the first thing or one of the things that my designs is, is an alternative to Printify or Printful or any of the other, you know, print on demand production partners that we've got out there. Because with my designs, you get access to print providers and you can sell your designs through my designs on Etsy and Shopify at the moment. They might expand that in the future, but those are the marketplaces you can sell on at the moment. And you don't have to go through Printify or Printful. My designs is basically like Printify, like Printful. You upload your designs, 
you create the listings, create the mockups, and then publish to the marketplace. Just My Designs has a ton of time-saving features that all of those other tools do not have. However, even if you don't sell on Etsy or you're not planning to sell there, you don't have a Shopify store, you can still get a lot of use out of My Designs because the second thing they are is a bulk and automation tool for many different processes that are involved with print on demand. So essentially, My Designs can help you save time with your listing creation generating keywords or tags, generating loads of mockups that are really nice, high quality, modifying designs as well, such as overlaying texture, overlaying patterns, or just adjusting the placement of multiple designs in bulk. And the fifth example of how my designs can help you if you don't sell through them is with their AI features. So they've got an AI image generator, they've got a bulk upscaler, bulk background remover, a bulk vectorizer and they've also got a bulk listing generator that works with AI. Many, many different features and ways that you can save time even without wanting to sell on Etsy or Shopify. You can use a lot of those features regardless of whether you sell through My Designs or not. And the third thing that My Designs is, is a cloud storage system. So that is going to help you by, first of all, having access to your designs and your listings anywhere in the world with any device. So if, if you're going away on holiday, you can log into My Designs on your laptop and you've still got everything there. You don't need to be linked to your PC that has its hard drive at home and, and that's where your files are stored. That's also beneficial because you've got a backup of everything. If you ever lose your data, if your hard drive dies or you PC malfunctions, then your data isn't lost. It is all still stored on My Designs. Next up, we've got a really interesting tool that can help you find keywords to use in your listing as well as niches. And I've only used this a couple of times now, but I've always found some very interesting micro niches with small search results, but still decent demand. So definitely worth checking this out. Once you've clicked the link in the description, you want to then click on visit keyword planner right here. And then we're going to use the discover new keywords function. So here you have to type in sort of a primary niche or keyword. For example, you could put dad shirt and you'll get associated ones. Um, you could put, let, let's do plant shirt instead. So uh, it's a slightly more specific niche. One thing to note as well is the location. So for me, it's set to United Kingdom by default. So for most of you, you probably want to change this to the USA. And then you just want to hit save down here and click on get results. And now it's going to show you a lot of Google search terms and how often they've been typed in on average per month. So we can sort this by average monthly searches as well by clicking on this header right here. And now we'll get a lot a lot of different ideas and not all of these are going to be good niches like I'm not saying that um, especially some of the the higher um, sort of monthly search volumes will be quite competitive like cactus t-shirt um, I'm guessing things like plant mom shirt they'll also be quite competitive but you can find some very interesting search terms here and sort of small sub niches um, within an overarching niche for example um, let's look through some of these ones right here and let's try out um, let's root for each other. I'm just going to copy this search term. It's getting a decent amount of monthly searches. And I think even if this is lower, even if this said 10 to 100, you will still find some good dishes where you can get two or three sales a month. It doesn't have to be much, but that can definitely add up over time. So let's type, let's root for each other into Amazon. Here we go, this has got 143 results, which is very, very small. And if we look down at the BSRs, there is a lot of shirts that are doing pretty, pretty well. So 100K BSR, 200K, um, some of these are Amazon FBA and not merch, but still this is a merch of Amazon shirt right here. I'm scrolling down further, these are all Amazon merch t-shirts and they all have a, besides these two on the right, they all have pretty good BSR. So I, I didn't check the phrase itself for trademarks, by the way, so I don't know if this is trademark free, but I just wanted to show you an example as to how I would go about using the uh, keyword planner to try and look for new sort of micro niches to target. This is obviously um, sort of a gardening design, but the good thing is if these smaller niches actually get search volume and you start to get sales within the sub niches, then you can also rank higher within the overarching niche of gardening t-shirt and get extra organic traffic that way. So definitely worth trying out this strategy. Really, really cool and effective from what I've found and I hope it helps you out as well. 
very impressive results with this sort of first option of POD body. Um, and let's sort of test this second one, which is dragging and dropping images into this. So it writes a description or a listing for you. So I've gone ahead and dropped five images right here into the chat box, as you can see. And now I'm going to just send this message and see what POD Buddy says. So these are the designs I've chosen, something hiking, uh, sort of a classic airplane, unicorn and a giraffe again, motorboat and the donut. And here we go. The listing is kicking off. The first one is for the vintage airplane image. Got it classic propeller airplane retro flight design. Here's some keywords, vintage airplane, classic aircraft, retro flight, propeller plane, old fashioned aviation. Wow, these keywords are actually really, really good. Nostalgic air travel. You can tell that it's actually understood the image and it's giving you very relevant keywords right there, which is brilliant. It even has pilot gift, which is a good keyword in my opinion for this design that wouldn't really be too obvious I suppose but yeah very happy with this first listing the description I think sometimes it's still a bit you know descriptive in that chat GPT style where it's very fancy words and filler words but overall this still encapsulates some good keywords and gives you a good starting point like perfect for aviation enthusiasts and collectors ideal for air show memorabilia or a pilot's gift so there is some really good keywords in this description as well as the title as well so so reveal is a bit like chat gpt just on steroids because here you can type in any prompt any question that you've got it will bring back a lot of search results again with the search volume data attached to it how's this different from aurora aurora you just type in a broad niche here you can actually you know speak to this and type in a prompt a specific question it'll be more specific in your results rather than throwing out lots of random search terms in that case so what we can do is well the example says give me all major cities in germany so let's say you wanted to create some designs for france we could do something like what are the most visited cities and towns in france we can hit search right here and there we go very quickly it's given us a long list of different cities to target and uh, once again take a further look into you've got the same features on this page you can copy individual keywords you can copy the whole list you've got the ratio over here you can filter this or order it i should say you could also order it by total products and then have the very small micro niches at the top so these are cities that still have search volume but they don't seem to have a lot of results those are always interesting to consider and yes yeah, so this one really cool let's try another example right here here in terms of a prompt let's maybe do most popular horse breeds in the usa search just to give you some inspiration you don't have to stick to cities in certain countries you can do types of you know types of certain vehicles you can do types of like a million different things you can type in right here again to get more niched down and to find some good niches to target and what can we see right here american quarter horse at the top low ratio though thoroughbred that's medium appaloza I don't even pronounce that. Look, 12,000 search volume and only 588 results. What shows up here? Um, books, again, movies, but we've got some t shirts as well. So, I mean, that shows that even on like a broader term, what you might expect to be broader results, you can find Amazon merch t shirts in there. And this has a lot of volume, so that's definitely interesting. And um, we've got tons more breeds right here. You can see this is a lot more concise than the Aurora tool. It's literally spit out horse breeds and not, not a lot of random stuff on top of that. So this is super interesting. You can use it more openly and ask it questions to find a lot of different niches more quickly. This next tip I'm going to share with you is an absolute game changer. So make sure to pay attention because this will not only save you countless hours of work, but it will enable you to really experiment with mid journey and get way better results in the future. So essentially it is called permutations, the function we're going to use today. And that's these funny looking brackets right here at the start of this prompt. Now this prompt is fairly straightforward. It's for a t-shirt design graphic of um, vehicles in front of a forest. What these brackets are going to do is they will enable us to have a variation of this prompt for a car in front of a forest and a motorbike in front of a forest. So with this single prompt, if we hit enter, we're going to actually be creating two prompts, one for a car, one for a motorbike. Now you might say that sounds very simple, not very revolutionary, but it gets better when we actually add more to this. So you could add another object, let's say a train, so that makes it three prompts. But 
what if we add more brackets somewhere else? So in front of a forest, what if we wanted different locations? We can then add a bracket right here and then put beach, comma, um, let's do desert, comma, forest. And we just have to make sure to close the brackets. And now we're actually going to get nine different prompts because we'll get a car in front of a beach, desert and forest, also a motorbike in front of a beach, desert and forest, and also a train with the same locations. So I think you can see right there how this will enable you to just save a lot of time. So if we hit enter, you're going to get the option to show all of the prompts that will be generated. So here they are, one after another, train in front of a desert, train in front of a forest, etc. So this will give you a better understanding of how this works. You can still edit the template if you're not happy with uh, the prompts that I've turned out. And if you click yes, it is going to, as you can see, quickly process and paste all of these different prompts into here. Besides just using different objects and locations, you could also do, say for example, animals wearing different things. You could also do various different design styles. So to give you just a, a very basic example, Let's do a dog, cat, and a horse, and let's make them in a specific style. So let's say retro, polygon, watercolor. Let's do a cartoon version as well. There we go. I'm sure you want to imagine 12 prompts. Yes, I do. And boom, there they are. Now, you do want to be careful with this because it's going to burn through your uh, fast hours very quickly. But nevertheless, it is just endless possibilities with this. You can, um, as we can see right here, create so many graphics in one go. You get so much choice. So to sum it up, both vectorizers and upscalers do a great job at increasing the quality of our low resolution AI art. Both of them have their ups and downsides. However, you don't have to worry about it too much. Just try them both, see which one works better for you. If you're working with vectors a lot and that's what you're into, use a vectorizer. If you're often working with photography, with Photoshop, photo editing tools, then just use an upscaler. It just depends on your situation. It depends on what sorts of ad you're using. So think about it, try out both options, whatever works best for you, whatever increases the quality enough will do the job. I see a lot of people who kind of put their primary keywords into the title and description, but besides those, they just form really long sentences that kind of don't help with uh, SEO or search engine optimization because they're more sort of saying, oh, this is going to be great and make uh, your loved ones laugh and it will work well as a party outfit or something like that. Oftentimes, those long descriptive sentences, they just add in irrelevant keywords that won't really help you get found for the niche that you're targeting. Let's say, for example, you've got a dog design and you title it funny dog t-shirt. Well, those keywords might be good, but they're also very broad, right? Um, lots of competition. So something else people might type in right here is gift for dog owner or even more specific gift for golden doodle owner, you know, a, a dog breed, a specific one. So essentially you have to realize here that people type in or search for products in various different ways, not just funny dog t-shirt. There's like hundreds of different variations how they might want to find your design. And that doesn't mean you have to create a hundred different keywords and slam them into your listing, but you have to really figure out some more relevant ones that can help you get found, such as puppies. So once again, with dog designs, some people might have a puppy version of that certain dog breed. So if you add the words puppy and puppies into your listing somewhere, then you're including way more people who might be searching for a golden doodle puppy t-shirt or a design or a gift. You know, there's various different ways to spell t-shirt or product types. So you could put shirt, you could put tea, graphic t-shirt. And I know on Amazon, you can't really put the product types anymore, but I'm also talking about other platforms such as Etsy, TeePublic, Redbubble, where you can still add words like gift or present to your listing and you should do that as well to help you get found. So try not to be uh, too descriptive and write like a like a short story in your, in your listing that doesn't really help you get found. Try and focus more on really relevant keywords that you can find with free tools even like the Redbubble Tag Generator by Merch Titans or AMZ Suggestion Expander which will literally tell you what people are typing in related to your primary keywords. So definitely spend some more time on writing your listings. I see a lot of people that just don't really put a lot of thought into them and uh, therefore are probably really hurting their sales. 
So the website in question is dgb.lol. I've mentioned them in the past, but they've recently introduced a new upscaler model, which lets you increase your AI images by six times. So 6x instead of the previous 4x, and the results are really, really good. All of the other online upscalers that I've tried limit you to either 2x or 4x and then you have to pay and they also limit you in the sense that you can't do bulk upscaling. With this tool you can do bulk upscaling and I'll show you the fastest way to use it on the free version. There is a premium option but that only gives you like a separate server where the queue is faster. It doesn't affect anyone in the free queue free queue is always going to be the same time the more premium users the quicker the free queue should be to be honest so that's that's even a good feature to be fair but the results are the same there's no difference in quality which is definitely a massive bonus there is a, a faster way to upscale on your device with upscale.org but if you have a slower computer that's going to be a big struggle so dgb.lol is the way to go in my opinion if you want to upscale your images online there is google ads on here which can annoy some people but you don't have to pay Burn up. which is better in my opinion so no need to have a subscription to this you've got an image upscaler mid journey splitter you've got quick upscaler background remover ai image to vector as well so a vectorizer dpi enhancer lots and lots of cool tools right here for ai artwork but let's go with the image upscaler there is a queue as you can see but at the moment the waiting time is only two minutes which is really good so let's click into this and it says maximum of 25 files for the bulk upload and the max per image is 10 megabytes or 10 megapixels each which is also quite a good limit most other online upscalers that i've tried have sort of a, a limit way sooner than that and i'll show you a quick trick right here because instead of uploading 25 files and then maxing out your queue because once you've filled out your queue you have to wait until the images are upscaled before you can upload more but what we can do in Instead is we can upload 20 images. So I'm going to drag and drop 20 AI images into here. You can see them in the background and the sort of faded collection. Then you select the upscaler model. By default, it is balanced. That is the old 4X model. Still very, very good result. I've compared it to other free online upscalers in a separate video. Highly recommend checking that out if you're still making the choice. And now we've got the DGB LOL Sharp 6X and the DGB LOL smooth 6x so let's start with the sharp version and hit submit tasks have now been queued the queue can be found over here where it says my files and there we go they've all been added it tells you right here which spot you have in the queue how many minutes is left it also shows the model that's been used on the right if you're testing multiple ones you might be thinking right now that you've got zero talent for design and that's why you're not getting any sales. That's why you will never succeed at printer demand. And this is just one example, right? Everyone's got different skill sets. And that may be true. You may not have any talent right now, but you've got potential that is way higher than you would expect. And my story proves that. 10 years ago, I could have never imagined that my potential for English is as high as teaching people on YouTube a business model in English. Like I would have never imagined that's possible. And the way this translates to your situation is, if we go back to the design example, is that you actually have the potential to create exceptional designs. You may not believe it right now, and you may think you've got zero talent, but you have the potential there. And the way to unlock this potential is through one very important mindset shift. And the mindset that you have to adopt, which I'm going to go into now, is a growth mindset. In order for you to understand growth mindset and how to apply it to your life or your business, you first of all need to understand what a fixed mindset is, because that's the counterpart to the growth mindset. A person with a fixed mindset likes to avoid challenges. They tend to ignore criticism. They also believe that skills and talent are predetermined. They give up easily and they might say things such as, I always fail, I will never improve, and why even bother? Because of all of these beliefs, someone with a fixed mindset automatically puts in less effort and gets worse results. On the contrary, the growth mindset person 
embraces challenges. They learn from criticism and feedback. They also believe that skills and talent can be developed. They keep trying and they say things such as, I will learn from failure. This will take time, but I want to keep learning. And people that adopt this growth mindset automatically put in more effort and get better results. Now, one thing to note here is that many of you probably have certain areas in your life where you've already applied a growth mindset, but then other areas you are still stuck in this fixed mindset without even realizing. And one good example of this, which I think most people can relate to, um, I definitely had this fixed mindset for the longest time, and that is, I can't remember names. How many times have you heard people say this or how many times have you said it yourself? And the truth is, you can remember names, you just never try to. There's three main uh, questions you have to ask. First of all, the marketplace that you're selling on, does it allow AI art? Or does it, maybe I should say, does it specifically say that you cannot use AI art? So if you look at the terms and conditions, is there anything about AI art in there telling you not to use it? Mm -hmm. I've done that research on multiple platforms and it doesn't typically seem to be the case. And I've oh, also good. emailed, I've emailed platforms and shown the responses in that video that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be that they don't really mind whether it's AI or whether you've created it yourself. Um, that video was a few months ago though. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, so I'm yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm telling you this so you can do your own research. So the first uh -huh. level is the marketplace policies. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what's important. Then the the second uh, category to check would be, do you have a license for mm. the AI tool you're using? So Midjourney, mm -hmm. for example, used to have a free plan. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have that anymore, but with the free plan, you didn't get a commercial license. You would have mm -hmm. to have a pay subscription. Mm -hmm. So always check if the AI generator that you're using actually gives you commercial um, rights. Leonardo, um, I think the free plan, you can even use the images commercially. So that's, that's right a too, good yeah. one. Um, but always double check because these rules can always change mm -hmm. um, over time. So that's the second thing is, do you have commercial rights through the AI generator? And then the third thing, and this applies to print on demand in general, and is super important is what sorts of graphics do you actually generate? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if we look through like the explore pages or the community feeds on a, all of these uh, AI tools, you usually see a lot of infringing content, which is okay if you're just using it, you know, for personal use or for fun, right. um, for exploration with the tools, that's fine. But if you want to sell it on Amazon, say, or Etsy, um, and to give an example, let's say you're creating Star Wars themed designs like Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. You, you can't sell those on Amazon just because you have a commercial license through Midjourney. It mm -hmm. it doesn't work. It's still infringing on a brand. Um, same goes for celebrities. A lot of people generate AI art with celebrities in them. So that is still not allowed, regardless of it being AI art. Um, if you're just creating, let's say, dinosaur designs, mm -hmm. that that's fine. Okay. It, it's yeah. the branded stuff that's not allowed. You've got different categories right here to filter by. So we've got free fonts, SVGs, graphics, embroidery, and classes. And then as you can see right here, we've got 206,000 freebies at the moment. Scrolling down, we see the most popular freebies right now. At the top, quite a few script fonts, which could um, work very well on greeting cards, for example, and greeting cards sell very well on Zazzle. Then we've got our first couple of t-shirt design bundles right here with some baby and summer quotes, which is really cool. This comic font definitely looks very nice. That could probably work well for kids themed niches as well. Daily to do KDP interior. That's interesting. So I think you can see right here that there's various different topics and lots of different styles uh, that suit print on demand. We've got some Valentine's Day patterns. There is rainbow brush strokes, which you could use in many different ways to color in your design. You could use it as a background element or even as a texture if you wanted to. 
And then there's a newest freebie section right here as well with some really cool looking patterns and designs. And scrolling back up to the top, I'm going to click on free fonts now to get a better idea of what the free fonts are like. So there's 4,000 results and you can also sort this by newest instead of most popular. There's about 100 pages, so you can flick through the pages more quickly here. If you scroll down, what can we see? Lots of script fonts. Adventure, that looks really cool with these little shadows right here in the letters. Then we've got a Halloween themed font, so different occasions are also really, really handy. Then we've got Mini Garden, that looks nice. Hollow Weekend, really cool handwritten font. That's quite bold and easy to read, so I'm just going to click into this to give you an example. You can flick through the mockups right here to see the text in action, back to school, happy birthday. And if you like one of these fonts, all you have to do is uh, register an account or log in. It will say for you right here, I logged in with my Google account where I don't have an active Creative Fabrica subscription. That's why it says free trial right here. Um, I don't have a trial active for anything. So once you've registered an account with your email or with Google, just click on download and it will download a zip file to your device. You can ignore this advert right here. You don't have to do it. And then just unzip the zip file and install the font. And you can use it in your designs, which is definitely really, really cool. So here we are inside of mid journey and essentially all you have to do is type in forward slash imagine then a certain topic that relates to your niche or um, you could also type in certain colors. Um, I'm going to give you various examples in this video of what to type in here. But let's say, for example, we start with summer and then just type color palette at the end of this. Um, I also tried color scheme, but I seem to be getting better results when I type in color palette. One thing you could do right here uh, to be a bit more specific is you could type in some colors that you want to be included let's say you want something um, that is quite muted you know like a pastel color scheme you could do um, orange pink and purple pastel color palette um, that's one way to be a bit more specific and not have such a random color scheme generated for you um, you could do various different holidays as well if you wanted to so um, let's say um, obviously you saw an Easter example there before. Let's say we want a Halloween color scheme in this. We type that in and it's probably going to come back with something that's quite orange and purple. Now here we've got the summer one and that already looks really, really nice. We've got some summer centric graphics like ice cream, uh, this van right here. We've got some summer fruits and next to it, you always get these color palettes. I'm going to show you in a little while how to sample these uh, more quickly and more easily, but yeah, just for now we want to look through some of these results so Halloween has been generated as expected orange and purple this is quite purple and blue heavy which is not ideal I suppose um, so if you wanted to get a more refined result there you could type in something like forward slash imagine orange Halloween and then color palette just to give you an example of what I would have done with this prompt. Now the pastel orange, pink and purple has come out really, really nice. I could see that working in various different designs. So it starts off by saying here is a mid journey prompt formula and then you would have to do a line break now if you hit enter then it's just going to send off this message and ChatGPT will answer but that's not what we want you need to hold down shift on your keyboard and then press enter and as you can see it is actually going to do a normal line break then and now this is where we're going to put the formula so we're starting off with an opening bracket and say image we're prompting this is essentially the variable so it might be a cat a dog a motorbike whatever that's what we will tell ChatGPT later on once it's understood the formula. And then we've got some extra bits here. So the next bit, once again in brackets, is the style of the artwork. So this could be cartoon, it could be vintage, you know, those sort of styles is what ChatGPT will randomly come up with. Next up, we've got the mood of the artwork. And then at the end, the lighting style of the artwork. Now I'm going to hold down shift again and do two line breaks and now I'm going to give it some extra commands um, to consider while writing these prompts. So first of all, each prompt must always end with, and then in quotation marks, t-shirt design graphic, vector, contour and white background. So this is always going to be added to the end of our prompts because we always need this to define the style to be a t-shirt design graphic. And now I'm going to say don't 
reference any of the original formula in the resulting prompt. And I'm saying that because sometimes ChatGPT likes to put these things right here back into the prompt for some reason. And then at the end, um, two line breaks again, we want to put, please respond with yes, if you understand this formula. That's basically it. Once again, you can copy it from the description if you'd rather, and then hit enter. ChatGPT should very quickly come back and say, yes, I understand the formula. So that's perfect. All we have to do now is essentially put down here, write three mid journey prompts and I'm using three. You could use 10 or 20, however, however many you want. I'm just using three to save a bit of time here for the video, but write three mid journey prompts for a, let's say dog holding an American Flag. That's one I've tried before and uh, something I'm playing around with for July the 4th. So once you've decided what you have at the end right here, all you have to do is just hit enter and wait for the AI to come back with some randomly generated prompts. So we've got a loyal canine proudly holding the American flag with a vintage art style evoking a patriotic and nostalgic mood illuminated by warm and golden lighting. T-shirt design graphic, blah, blah, blah. So definitely some interesting uh, longer descriptive prompts right here. Someone pointed out to me that one of their products, which had been uploaded to Merge for quite a while and had been getting a lot of sales, got rejected while they used the automatic translation feature. Now, what happens when you use that feature? In theory, your English listing gets translated into all of the other languages, German, French, Spanish, Italian. Those translations get reviewed and either rejected or accepted. If you do get a rejection from those translated listings, that is not bad for your account. It doesn't affect it. Merge for Amazon has stated this specifically that you, you won't get your account terminated for something that Amazon translated, right? However, what they don't mention and what I don't think a lot of people know about is that your English listing gets reviewed as well. Now, you might think that's not a problem because it initially got got through, it wasn't rejected, but what about old listings? This has happened to me before and specifically to one of my best selling products of all time. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll push this to all of the other marketplaces. I'll just enable the translation and suddenly all of my products were rejected, including the English ones. It could happen for a simple reason, like you still have the word gift in your title, which a couple of years ago was totally fine. Amazon wasn't bothered about it. So you could submit products with the word gift in there and you wouldn't get a rejection. Nowadays, they don't really want you to do that. And most of the time, if you include that word in your title, Amazon will reject your submission. So that means if you let Amazon translate older products, uh, it could also be adult humor topics, which uh, used to be fine, but now they're a bit funny with, they might get rejected just from you translating the listing data for the other marketplaces. So be really careful here um, because while you might think your English listing is fine, it could still get a rejection if you push it to other marketplaces. That's the reason why I stopped using that feature a while back. I would recommend to you um, unless you're 100% sure that your English listing is fine and, and won't get rejected if it gets reviewed again, not to bother with that feature. And then the trademark types, which I find most interesting, because if we read this right here, it says that the text trademarks, you're not allowed to use regardless of the form it appears in. You can use whatever font, whatever color, it doesn't matter, you cannot copy those. The design trademarks, drawings, illustrations, etc., and they protect that exact design, which you're not allowed to duplicate. So as long as you don't copy the design, you're fine. Typeset is sort of in the middle. Typeset means that it is without standard character claim. The, the text ones have the standard character claim and you are usually allowed to use it as long as there's no intent to deceive the customers into thinking they're purchasing a product of that said brand. So if, if the word cat is trademarked and it's a typeset trademark, which is actually the case, I think, and because there's like a um, company that produces machines that's called Caterpillar or whatever, or cat. If you don't use the word cat with the intention of copying that brand and then making customers buy a branded product from you, and you actually, like most people, using the word cat for the animal for a cat-based t-shirt design, then you're fine. You can use the typeset one. Now, I would be careful here because I think there's, for example, some typeset trademarks for Nike or Nike, and I, I would definitely not use Nike in my listing, even though there's just typeset trademarks for that one. But, you know, you have to kind of 
try and understand this, be smart with it. If there's a common word that's a types of trademark, it's probably fine. If it's a big brand name that's very well known, it's probably dangerous and then stay away from it. But the main ones that I need to watch out for are the text trademarks. Those are the most powerful and will most likely lead to rejections. Reason number 10 is definitely one not to be overlooked and one that doesn't get mentioned a lot and that's that it is actually very rewarding to be selling print-on-demand products or it feels very rewarding because if you think about it, if you sell hundreds of t-shirts, that's actually your design that people are wearing out in the world or that they're gifting to some of their loved ones. Um, especially at Christmas, I often think about this, uh, how many people are opening presents right now that are designed by me and are actually like happy to receive the gifts. Um, obviously not everyone, but you know, you get the idea. Um, it can feel re really rewarding in that way. And we also get this through reviews. So um, maybe not so much on Amazon, but on Etsy, I often get really kind reviews from people with pictures and maybe with their family members that are really happy to receive their, their t-shirts or their mugs or whatever as gifts and I've even done like custom designs before for uh, birthday parties. I'm pretty sure one of them was like a hundredth birthday where I made a custom design for the family to match every every generation and I got a picture back from that with a review to my Etsy shop. That's just a really rewarding feeling and it, it sort of reminds you um, who you're actually working for in a sense or what you're doing with your print and demand sales so um, that's something to, to bear in mind and it's definitely one of the, the big reasons in my opinion why you should start a print on demand business because you're actually helping put smiles on people's faces and sort of sharing your designs with the world. Next up we've got Flying Upload and this is essentially an upload automation tool which I've been using all the way since 2020. It allows you to upload your designs to over 10 different marketplaces. So to give you some examples, I've been using it to upload my designs to TeePublic, to Redbubble, Spreadshirt, Society6, Displayed, Tostadora, Fine Art America, Teespring, Printful and Etsy also are integrated with flying upload and there's probably still some some options that I'm forgetting about there's just so many marketplaces that they integrate with the cool thing about this is that not only do you save time but you also create new income streams for yourself because I'm guessing that most of you don't sell on 10 platforms right and especially if you've got a thousand or a few thousand designs you've been doing this for a while you'd never want to manually upload those to all of these different platforms and I, I get you it's really tedious it's not very productive in a sense to sit there all day long and just upload designs and it will just make you burn out so flying upload solves that problem for you it's not a one click of a button solution where everything happens magically you still have to put in some time to learn how the tool works and to set it all up the templates configure everything in the settings but once you've done that once you've got used to it the amount of time you save and the extra income you generate can be massive to give you an example one of the platforms that i uploaded my designs to is society6 and this is one of my worst performing print on demand marketplaces. I don't sell very many designs on there. But over the years, I've made a few thousand dollars in royalties through Society6. And basically, all those royalties are way enough to cover my flying upload subscription fees. So just this one marketplace alone has helped me generate more income than it cost me to purchase flying upload, which helped me save a massive amount of time. So that is just one example. Um, obviously, everyone's got a different experience, but if you value your time and if you have a lot of designs, I think a tool like Flying Upload is one of the best things that you can invest to. They've also got free plans and beginner models to help you try out the software. You don't have to go all in from the start like me and risk it all. Obviously, the pro version is the one that lets you access all of the different platforms. I think the lower plans are quite limited in terms of how many different marketplaces you you can upload to. In the third place, we've got Font Scribble. And I know this website looks super outdated, but it's not to be underestimated because their mission statement says, we know how hard it is to find quality freeware that is licensed for commercial work. And that's why I've done the hard work, hand selecting these typefaces and presenting them to you in an easy to use format. So all of these fonts on this website are free for commercial use, which is super handy because we don't have to apply any filters. And one of the first fonts that comes up actually is one of my all time favorite favorites 
for print on demand designs. I've created thousands of designs with this font, I'm pretty sure, and it's called Intro Rust. This is a massive font family and you get three styles right here for free. I personally have purchased some additional styles since finding this free version because it is quite addictive. So you can download these with the big purple button at the top and uh, if you scroll down further, you can also find fonts in different categories over here. So if you're looking for a distressed font, for example, just click into this and you will get these filtered out. There's definitely some interesting looking ones. I like these banners as well. Those could be handy for t-shirt design or print on demand. So very cool website, a lot of valuable, nice looking fonts on here. And there's no worries about filtering out free for personal use ones because all of these are ideal for commercial projects. Lastly, one of the best ways to save time when using Producta is the import Excel sheet feature, which is especially useful for people who have a ton of upload slots to fill because essentially, if you import the correct Excel sheet, Producta will open a ton of tabs for you. It will fill in the title, description, and uh, brand name, all of that stuff for you automatically. All you have to do then is just drag and drop the correct designs into your listings and you can hit publish. You save the entire, you know, copy and pasting, changing the title, description, all of that stuff. You save all of that time by just configuring a spreadsheet and you can do that in bulk and very quickly as well, um, which I'll show you. Essentially, the feature is up here and you can download an example spreadsheet if we open this up, as you can see, um, you've got various columns for the different like brand name, title, bullet points, and for the various marketplaces. I've actually prepared a preset spreadsheet right here to just show you how to actually use this for scalable designs to save time. And I will also leave a download link to this spreadsheet in the description so you can use it and adapt it for your own workflow. So here we go. This is my spreadsheet and this is a bit more of an advanced method for high tier sellers with a lot of slots, but this is just to explain explain or give you a basis to work off. So essentially here we've got 20 listings. I've just filled in the brand name, title and bullet point one. So you might still want to fill out the other bullet point in the description. And yeah, the international marketplaces I've just left out for ease sake. But I've also added a list of different job titles here. And you can, you can change this to various different other niches. Like you don't have to use job titles specifically. This is just an example. The way we use that list of job titles is we have a formula within the brand name, title and bullets that is up here. It essentially pulls those job titles into your columns over here, into your rows. And the cool thing about that is if we want to use the same spreadsheet, but we want to create different designs for different niches, different topics, you can just quickly change the listing data for all of them at once. So let's say instead of a retirement design for these job titles, we now want to make one for Father's Day. All I have to do is change that right there, hit enter. And now we can use the bottom right corner right here of this green box to drag all the way down. And it's going to change the title for all of these designs with the job titles staying the same because those are being pulled from over here. And you can use multiple rows of variables, by the way. You, you don't just have to do it with one variable. It works with multiples. You just have to use this same formula right here as it's shown in the example. I have a separate video explaining this formula in more depth, by the way, about bull creating listings in Excel. But this is just a quick spreadsheet for you to download and make changes to your liking. Yeah use it for scalable designs. And let me just show you what happens when we now import this spreadsheet into Producta with their really cool feature. So all you have to do is hit import Excel sheet up here, select it from your device. It says applying draft right there. And now it says done. So it looks like nothing's happened. But if you scroll down to the bottom, as you can see, all of the rows from a spreadsheet for the title, brand and bullets have been filled in. So all you have to do for this listing is drag and drop the design in here. And if you're, well, you preset settings, you, sh you should have saved them with the right colors and, and right pricing, etc. If those are all set, you just have to maybe double check for trademarks and hit publish. So again, no fiddling around with the listings, but even better, you can click on open the next 10 entries in separate tabs. You can't see anything now because I'm full screen, but essentially it's opening a new tab for the next 10 rows in Excel and pasting the listing data in there really quickly. So then again, we just have to drag and drop designs in and hit publish. Tool number eight is Vexel's AI Quote Generator. And this is specifically designed 
to give you t-shirt design phrases, which is really, really cool because that's an area I think most people struggle with. I find it quite hard sometimes to come up with funny phrases to fit my niche. The cool thing about this tool is you've got a ton of control. So you can select a few preset niches or type in your own keyword or keywords. Sometimes I've used multiple keywords and still gotten great results. Works especially well for cross niching in my opinion. Then you can select the mood of the phrase. So do you want it to be cynical, funny, motivational, sad? You've got various different options here and then also the length. So you can say short, medium or long depending on how much space you want it to take up on your t-shirt and how easily you want it to be read by people. So lots of variety here, lots of different ways to generate t-shirt phrases. I've come up with quite a few recently and gotten sales with them on Amazon. For example, for July the 4th, I've targeted some specific niches and the phrases that I came up with with this tool were way better than anything I could think of and it shows in the sales. It's definitely being reflected. And unfortunately, there's no free trial to this tool anymore. There used to be in the past, but now it is included in the Vexels subscription fee, which if you only want to use the quote generator, it's not really worth it. But if you also use all of the other features on Vexels, like all of the high quality graphics, the mock-up generator, then it makes more sense to go for this. If you have a Vexels subscription, definitely check it out because it's an amazing tool that's helped me a lot already. One way that I plan to increase my sales in 2024 is by taking my existing Amazon merch listings and bulk uploading them to Etsy. And if you want to learn one of the most time efficient and easiest ways to do this, make sure to check out this tutorial next.